my Adore, my 64, my Commodore 64. Hi there, and welcome to a Let's Type episode from the Commodore 64 Appreciation Society. This is a series where I reach back into the past and type out a program from an old computer magazine, and then when I finish typing it in, I play it. Today we are going to type in Goblin, a game from the July 1983 issue of Compute. This particular issue was a special games edition featuring seven games, but only two of which are available for the 64. I previously typed a great program called Rats from this issue, and this is the second. Goblin was written by Dan Goff, and it sounds like a fun game from the description. Basically, we take on the role of a goblin whose goal is to capture a bunch of scowling creatures without hitting obstacles. That's the backstory. Nowadays, the game would start off with a five-minute cinematic narrated by Keanu Reeves. But this is 1983, and we didn't have time for that. <coughs> Tell us what we need to do to get a high score and then leave us alone. It was an awesome time. Sorry, Keanu. Goblin was written for the VIC-20, which had 3.5k of RAM to play with. The notes indicate that the 64 code is almost identical to the original, so we know it's going to be a very small, probably pretty simple game. Sure enough, looking at the code in the magazine, the 64 version takes up all of about one column. It might be the smallest type game I've ever seen, actually, but great things can come in small packages. Let's get typing and see what we get. So here's my setup. I'm using the Vice64 emulator on my Mac and place the program code behind. It's a lot easier to follow this way than it was with an actual magazine. As we get going, I thought it would be fun to look through some of the ads in this issue. When I was a kid, the very first thing I would do when I got the latest issue of Compute was to scan through it for the game ads. There was no internet back then, so the way we would hear about games would be either from friends or magazines. Here's a double spread from an upstart new company called Electronic Arts, asking us whether a computer can make us cry. It's a think piece of an ad. To be honest, I probably would have skipped past this really quickly as a kid, but considering where EA is today, it's an interesting piece. This Broderbund ad was more my style. Bright, colorful, and showing Choplifter, one of my all-time favorites. This one would have had me drooling. The gaming holy grail in 83 was to be able to play faithful reproductions of arcade games at home, and Zaxxon was a huge title. I used to love Tronics ads. They all kind of looked like this, and they were very memorable. I actually don't think I ever played any of these ones though. Here's a fun one for the game Final Orbit by Sirius. It's a classic example of an early gaming ad. A great deal of detailed art and backstory with one simple screenshot that shows a couple sprites. Hey, it was 1983 and we had to use our imaginations. Okay, back to our code. We're making good progress and are well into the game now. I'm going to skip ahead a few minutes and we can get on with running it. Okay, that was the last line. We're just going to give it a quick save so we don't lose our work. And here's the entire program. As you can see, there isn't much to it. It takes up 8 blocks of storage on disk, which is about 2K. This is definitely small. Let's run it. It's spending some time defining the graphics. This particular game doesn't use sprites or high resolution. Instead, it alters the 64 standard character set. The changes are defined in a few data statements at the end of the code and are being read in and processed while we wait here. Huh, the screenshots of the game show the obstacles as blocks, not Ds, so something's goofy. Whoa, that was fast. So the goblin starts at the bottom and moves up. I'll be ready this time. Let's try it again.
Those scowly faces are great. Uh-oh, that's not good. Although it is pretty funny to see the faces instead of A's. Looking at line 300, it matches what's in the magazine, so something else is obviously going on. I'm going to back out and review the code to see if I can find the error. After reviewing the code, I found a couple of small typos that have been fixed, but the biggest problem was that I just skipped line 109. A game can often run with a minor error, but not when you just leave out important code. I'm sure that's the problem. Okay, that's much better. The obstacles now actually look like obstacles. Haha, <laughs> that's not a good start. Let's try again. That's better. My goblin has a clearer path now and I can get some of those scowly face guys. Oh, I like how it wraps. You get 25 points for face, and the idea is to keep going as long as you can. The controls are simple, and there's only a slight delay between pressing the key and your guy moving. The game uses a get statement to capture the movement keys. On the 64, this is quite responsive, but on the VIC-20, it would have been slow enough that you could probably outpace the computer and queue up a bunch of moves in a row. In fact, the description of the game actually says that you can make quick key presses and wait for the delayed effects. That would make for a different strategy entirely. I've played Goblin a number of times now and feel like I'm starting to get the hang of it. I haven't really come close to clearing the board yet, but I'm pretty happy with a 475 high score. I think I can beat it though. This is a really fun game. It has the feel of a modern mobile game. It's addictive. The games are over quickly, the controls are simple, and the goal is simply to get a high score. Also, this would be a fun game to modify. For example, it wouldn't take much to add in some difficulty levels that change the number of faces and or obstacles that show up. And I'm a big sucker for high scoreboards, so that would be something you could add as well. I'm pleasantly surprised. As said earlier, great things can come in small packages and Goblin proves it. Dan Goff did a terrific job designing this one and it's just another solid example of the types of games that we'd find in compute magazines back then. And there we go, 500 points, new high score, and I'm dead. See ya. Thanks for watching and I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please consider leaving a like or subscribing. And if you have any experiences with Goblin or typing in your own programs, I'd love to hear about them in the comments. Hope to see you again.